Whoa, sorry about that. I'm Fleagle Flogel, and this is a really bad album, and I don't like it. So, you know what I'm gonna do with it? I'm gonna burn it. <laughs> we don't know. Oh, 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 he's fighting back. Oh, oh. I've got no head. What am I gonna do? Retard. Mommy! <laughs> Hello, Fleagle Flogel here, and today I'm going to be doing another review. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my third review of the guy, Cotton Beefheart. Uh, the 1978 album, which is known as Shiny Beast Bat Chain Puller. Um, he tried to be popular and made two mainstream albums, which is Unconditionally Guaranteed and uh, Blue Jeans and Moonbeams. Uh, not only did this fail in trying to get popularity, but um, the people who did like him hated him then because they didn't like it, and his original magic band quit. He actually got a different band who never heard of his stuff to play Blue Jeans and Moonbeams, and they were known as the Tragic Band because they were just not as good. So there he left and he was stuck without anyone. In 1975 he then went on a collaboration with his old friend Zappa to do the live album Bongo Fury and with this he got some of the members from there and some other people to form a new magic band and from here he made what was known as Bad Shade Puller and um, the original tapes was then deleted for some reason it was lost and uh, the company he worked for shipped them out without his approval, he didn't want it, so he remade it and called it Shiny Beast by Chain Puller. So, anyways, um, where is it? Once again, I don't have it, the album that is. And the reason is, it's lent my nine year old cousin, I think that's pretty epic, someone of his age, like in Beefheart, and I will get it on Boxing Day the next time I see them. But, anyways, oh well. For one thing, once again, there are two songs off this album that are in my top 200. The first being the first song on this album, which is really high on my list, which was the Floppy Boot Stomp. I could talk ages for this, honestly, it's just, it must have been so great for these people who were like disappointed with the other two and then they heard, hmm, he's supposed to be getting back to his usual standards, and then they would have been blown away, honestly. It's just got everything that you want, plus it sort of feels like the whole album a bit still getting a bit of it. It's hard to explain, like it's still a bit poppy, but it's still bringing back the experimental, weird, funny stuff that Beef had done. And this is easily shown in the first track, The Floppy Boot Stomp. The lyrics is about a hoe down with a farmer against the devil, and he does the hoop do hoe down, and the lyrics are just absolutely brilliant. Just like, um,. That old bone was sticking out of his phone when the farmer drew up, said, Listen, son, and the horse compared his hooves. Oh, dear. And pretty clever lyrics, like, again, the, the devil's tail once went red, now was pale. And just brilliant. I love the drumming on it. The guitar is just really weird and just jumping in different the stereo forms. I love the horns that I've played. And... I also love, um, which never really happened, the, the people playing actually come in as backing vocals in here. And I think that's just great. And at the end he actually sings with them. And you know, you're just used to him being on himself. And just everyone together as a proper kind of band is just, I think it's brilliant. And um, again, I'm going to talk about the second track, which is also a fan's favourite, I think, which is uh, Tropical Hot Dog Night. And... Just the guitar is so happy and jumpy and jaunty and I love the horn in it as well and I think this is another thing that's epic about this and this is because people are probably hinting a trout mask replica and he's just playing he's just playing really weird free jazz and it just sounds horrible at first listens but on this it's just so tuneful so so well played and it just sounds like he's played it for ages he's just real constructed into something that you would expect from a proper horn and I think that's great that and again um, lovely lyrics from this song and 
is just a great, it's just joy to listen to. I'm just going to run through my other favourite songs. Uh, the other one that was in my top 200 was When I See Mummy, I Feel Like a Mummy. And for the first minute is just experimental, um, like instrumental. And with here you just get, it's absolutely epic. Just you really want to just dance to it and do like some Egyptian dance thing. And I just love the bass, it's really hard hitting. And the horns are brilliant. And everything's epic about the song. Harry Irene, that's a that's a simple song as well. If you want to like hear a nice, easy listening song, Harry Irene does it for you. And same thing goes with Candle Mambo. It sort of fits in. I sort of think of the love kind of songs that you done uh, back in 1972 or three with um, Clear Spot. The love songs off there, like um, My Head Is My Only House Unless It Rains. Just really nice peaceful songs and it's just again really uplifting just his poetry is just brilliant like um candle rolling ball and ball candle blur candle work candle her candle her and just i love the songs there's so many songs i love the title track is also an epic song i have to say as well um you got this idea from needing to think of some sort of percussion structure so he went to in his car driving in the rain he had to stop for a train to pass and the windscreen wipers were going on and that that's the percussion he went back and told the drummer to get the cymbals and play it like that this is brilliant and I also like on here and um, the sort of uh, have fun doodles with uh, synthesizers and this is really apparent with the title track with like the it's just like really it's a doodly 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 it's, and it's really weird, but that's what I love about it. It's just interesting how he's using more modernised kind of instruments and sort of taking them apart with here. And like I say in Dr. The Radar Station, he even uses more like violins and stuff like that. Any bad tracks? I don't know, there isn't really. There isn't any. Um, I suppose the one that you could class as bad is the last track, which is called Apesma. This is a 40 second spoke. Um, spoken word kind of thing and it's just him doing that but it's a, it's a pretty funny and a pretty dark as well and there's only 40 seconds you kind of complain so I wouldn't like pay 99 pence off iTunes to get apes man, I'll just say that there's an instrumental on here which is called Ice Rose maybe that goes on a bit too long um, maybe the, some of the songs might go on a bit too long but that's basically it there isn't anything that bad and that's all I can say really. I love this album really. I really do. Most people say, oh you should start with this album. It's got a great mix of experimental stuff but easy listening. Don't. Some people say to start with clear spot. It's an easy in. Don't. What I do is do what I did. Start with um, safe as milk. Then go on a trout mask. If you can make that good of a jump Get used to Trout Mask and sort of think this is what Captain Beefheart is. Then have your mind blown when you listen to this album. That's just what I do, okay? And that's basically it. Overall, I'd give this album a 9 out of 10. It's absolutely brilliant. Really recommended. And I hope you get it. But, hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope you join us next time. See you later. Bye-bye.